Hello beautiful people, happy Wednesday, happy midweek and welcome to your practical application of astrology and my personal story share. So this is coming around in a little bit unusual time and form. Once again I'm in the nature and it's absolutely stunning around here. We did have a little bit of rain so it is quite grey but beautiful and green and I just decided to let the nature speak and come out into the nature and share some of my thoughts and experiences with regards to my experience here here on uh, the farm in Tennessee and how things have been showing up in my life and uh, see how that might be potentially applied to what's been going on for us astrologically in uh, recent days and weeks. We know that we just experienced the uh, full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces just over a week ago and currently we are having all these activations with Mercury because Mercury is ending his transit through the sign of Virgo. Yesterday Mercury made a trine to Uranus to the opposition to Neptune and tomorrow trying to Pluto and after that Mercury will move into the sign of Libra which is where Mercury will be for the upcoming solar eclipse new moon in Libra which will take place on October 2nd next week so we are in this what we call uh, the in between in between the two eclipses and uh, yeah it's been quite profound I, I am not gonna lie there's been a lot of intensity as I shared in my last video and I'm just gonna warn everyone this is going to be more of my <laughs> trying to figure out things in my own head so I don't really have any shape and form with regards to what am I going to talk about over here uh, but I'm just going to do my best and uh, perhaps there will be something of a value that other people can resonate with as well so yeah it's I'm actually exactly halfway through my stay here believe it or not it feels so surreal that I was just recently in the UK preparing for my coming here and now I'm halfway half the way through I've been here over two and a half weeks now and I have two and a half weeks yet to go and then I'll be ready for another transition back to Europe and uh, revisiting my family and then uh, preparing for my winter season and another relocation over there so it feels like there is a lot of movement going on uh, and there is a lot of movement going on from everybody I'm sure and especially now with Sun being in a sign of Libra which is a masculine sign which is a cardinal sign we are in a new season and Venus as the ruler being in a sign of Scorpio a lot of things are coming up to the surface no kidding especially with that Pluto being the ruler of Scorpio being on 29 degrees Capricorn and still retrograde for another couple of weeks so there is for sure a lot of stuff a lot of um, shadow regurgitating <laughs> and coming up to the surface to our of our consciousness and this is even what I shared in my previous practical application of astrology in a nature <laughs> since I arrived here I know I only record one uh, recorded one this is uh, what um, definitely I've been experiencing myself how this old outdated belief system has been coming out to the surface uh, to be uh, looked at uh, because being surrounded by this brand new environment and in many cases people I never met in my life uh, there are a lot of um, things coming up to the surface which uh, are you know lying dormant under normal or uh, different circumstances and now especially being surrounded by um, different people who are all unique and very Aquarian, very authentic. Uh, this is um, allowing aspects of myself that I potentially wouldn't even know that they are there to come to come out and to be seen. So there's been a lot of processing and a lot of observation and one thing I observed uh, that was dominant, dominant theme was um, how it's so easy to completely disconnect from the world you know like being here on a farm uh, in a rural area surrounded by nature where there is literally nothing here like everything is driving distance so you cannot really really walk to anywhere <laughs> and um it's just so easy to be disconnected from all this hustle and bustle of the world and what's going on and just like um, even when I'm talking to my family I say that this is like living in a suspended reality like kind of like just in a completely different realm you know being here on a farm and it's just like um, you work in a natural rhythm you know sunrise sunset you know weather conditions is it raining is it not raining what's going on sunny you know uh, so it's a completely different lifestyle it, it's like a completely different rhythm completely different rhythm and it's just like so easy for the body you know the human body to just go back to that you know it's like uh, we are living in this hustle and bustle this world that is like continuously just 24 7 365 days a year just on a go 
go, go and this pressure, you know, to continuously do things and uh, overachievement and stuff. And here there is not really any uh, like a schedule as per se, you know, to be adhering to. Um, it's just like, oh, well, let's see what the weather will be doing. You know, let's see what, you know, what are the circumstances, what's going to be happening with the people around us, you know, and uh, their potential commitments or responsibilities. Everything is more in a flow state and things still get done, you know, still th things still get done. But it's just this different way of being, you know, where it's just uh, more natural. We are allowing the body, you know, to slow down and just to be more uh, conscious about what we need. Right. And I mean, not just myself, but people around me as well. And there is much more conversation like I am spending very little time on my phone, which is also why I haven't been uh, all that active on my social media. I, I do, you know, consciously um um, make myself I, I am aware that there are transits going on and I do record videos uh, short videos for my Instagram and I am keeping a track on that but uh, it's just been this like like really like a retrieval into some kind of like a hermit cave you know which now we are no longer in a Virgo season but Venus is in Scorpio and Scorpio is very introspective it's very deep uh, in great energy so it's quite fascinating to me that you know like this all started in a Virgo season which you know this is all about Virgo being in the nature you know eating uh, healthy organic food on a farm all vegetarian and stuff and now we've gone into Libra season but Venus is in Scorpio you see so it's like it's still all these water and emotions and based on the players the, the people that are showing up in my life and having a very close encounter with someone very dear to me recently a lot of emotions a lot of unhealed wounds from the past suppressed you know suppressed memories have been coming up to the surface resurfacing and i really feel even you know i've been uh, sharing this with people around me that i feel like kind of having um, in a sense of a, like a brain fog you know where my brain is not kind of like working like in a logical way and sometimes i even uh, struggle finding the correct words and stuff but um since I arrived here, I really felt that this is like an opportunity to uh, ground, you know, to allow the Mama Gaia, you know, to Mother Earth to be embraced by Mother Earth rather than, you know, just the spirit. Because when I go to Mexico, for example, this is a very like Mexico is a very different energy for me. It's an energy where I'm like continuously working with the spirit. It is so easy for me to channel, to do my automatic writing and to do all the spiritual work, like just completely being disconnected from the world, but in a different way and connect to the like more of like the water and, and the spirit. Whereas here, I really feel that uh, my guides and also the universe like wants me to ground like connect with mother nature you know like I have only done one automatic writing when I arrived and that was like for personal purposes I haven't I haven't been really active with regards to my channeling or even my light language and stuff like that it's just like very very different way of being and it's just interesting for me to observe myself and my body how it just naturally adjusts to this uh, rhythm and this frequency and this way of being and I really feel that this is uh, why so many people feel the need to go to nature, feel a need to, you know, go on the retreats and reconnect and just to um, change the gears, you know, to be able to experience the reality from that different perspective, from that more natural perspective and uh, just to see like how that resonates. And now, you know, um, I don't have the answers with regards to future, like, is this how I want to live for the rest of my life? Is this something that I can or can't do? I don't have the answer for that, because um, as it usually is the case, uh, as I shared multiple times with regards to my traveling and continuous relocation and stuff, the first week is usually hard for me, even when I go to Mexico and despite the fact that I feel this big exhale, you know, like, oh, finally I can breathe, you know, because usually I go to Mexico after spending a few weeks with my family, so I feel completely emotionally and spiritually depleted by the point that I get there. And I always feel that, the, especially the first week too, you know, I feel like this big exhale and just being able to decompress and recalibrate and just go into my cocoon and reconnect to myself emotionally. But here the energy is different. It's like really like uh, connecting to mother nature and also people around me. So this is more like a like a human experience, like more like a um, 
earthy, earthy experience, you know, and no wonder that I feel the call to just record my little musings here in the nature. So it's more like that, like reconnecting to people. And as I started saying, observing that a lot of people want to talk, they want to talk, they want to express themselves. There is also that safe space, the container where people are able to do that, you know, uh, um, just like being able to be authentic and not being reprimanded for it or feeling unable to do so to be authentic and express themselves so a lot of people that are coming here and some are just coming for a short period of time uh, as you know as I might have mentioned that we were planning like a little kind of retreat like get together which didn't quite work out the way we planned because um, my host my good friend got actually uh, bitten by a snake so that completely uh, reshuffled the whole um, not exactly scheduled a rigid program but things just happen differently but not better not worse just differently and this again uh, was a very symbolic and an opportunity to understand how you know the things that we want might not always be the things that are right for us and sometimes these interferences you know these tower moments and these things that uh, you know on a surface level we think like oh this is just terrible you know it's a disaster you know like uh, how could ha this have happened or why did this happen to me or something like that they you know eventually might show up to be the best thing and uh, led to situations or thoughts or ideas or whatever le led to this new uh, energy that uh, is going to change everything so that's what I feel like you know for many of us that are coming here some of people are here like long term some people are just coming as I mentioned for a few days um, uh, we are all rediscovering all these different aspects of ourselves and potentials of being and I think this is so um, it is so weird because even like talking about it, I really feel like this is just like the container that is holding us all to be able to pause and do that inner reset, the inner recalibration, the inner reconnection, the inner grounding and embodying, right? So I really feel that this place um, which I'm currently visiting, it is not so much about, you know, doing and especially now is the end, uh, coming up to end of farm, farming season so there is much less work to be done obviously weather is becoming unpredictable so, you know, when it's heavily raining, the stuff cannot be done that could be done when the weather is nice and stuff like that so it's more this flexibility but I really feel that uh, what this place offers, especially at the moment, um, is this opportunity to hold the space, to hold the space and just allow for the people present um, to just to just uh, ground and be <laughs> for people present to be present. Literally, that I think is the word I'm seeking, just to be present, just to be present in the moment, to be present with oneself. Uh, even today, I felt this surge of emotions coming up for me, which didn't necessarily even have a cause to be there. But like this, this being in nature, and I'm sure this is not just like, oh, okay, you have to come to this very place because you can't have it anywhere else. But I really feel when we allow ourselves that time and space like spent in a nature and in reconnection with these natural cycles and natural rhythms of uh, where we came from you know we all came from earth we came from cosmos too but at the moment we are embodied we are in a human body and just to be able to reconnect to that natural rhythm and experience reality from that perspective from that point of view because as i started saying at the beginning living in the cities and it, this constant hustle and bustle and this continuous doing and this pressure and stress and it's just never ending it's just never ending there is always more to do there is always more to worry about it just keeps us as a human population in this continuous um, entrapment in this continuous like wheel you know this um, how you call it hamster wheel right hamster wheel and then uh, taking ourselves in this case myself because this is the first time I've ever done anything like that I never been on a farm like my dad was laughing at me and saying like you going to the farm you don't like dirt like how are you gonna survive over there and you know there are things that I struggle with and then there are things that I feel you know very doubtful I could compromise on <laughs> like not having a bathroom you know and toilet in the house I don't think I could do that long term you know and unfortunately for me that is not the case for myself because my uh, my host my good friend uh, Adrian my astrology friend uh, she um, is sharing her house with me so I'm staying in her guest room in the house with the bathroom and everything but this again you see it's like um, 
raising questions in myself and me uh, giving myself opportunity to question these rigid attachments, you know, to comfort zone and survival and it's just like this entire time, it's so funny because on one sense I feel like I have brain fog and somebody is stand, standing on my cable, you know, but on the other sense it's, it's um, like my um, concentration and my focus is very oriented in certain directions so for example like this you know like attachment our attachments as a human race to discomfort zone and convenience and cities and then being um, exposed or interacting with the opposite you know like oh okay well you know here we, ever, we live a little bit differently you know it's more all natural and we share we, we you know like save the resources we don't waste stuff you know wasting water wasting whatever you know so it's like a very different you know different way of being and then and this trigger, the shadow comes up and say, well, I don't want that. You know, I want to go back to the convenience. I don't want to, you know, compromise on this and stuff. And this is where, and I don't have the answer. You know, this is just like when I'm sharing that I've been observing these old ways, you know, old versions of myself that I'm attached to. And then this, you know, openings or this opportunity to experience different ways and no better or worse it's just a contrast it's just a contrast and it doesn't mean that one or the other has to be the chosen path it's just the contrast right just like we are experiencing with the nodes in Aries Libra we are experiencing the contrast we are experiencing the totality of uh, division and uh, unfairness and injustice in the world but at the same time we are also experiencing you know people going in their own direction you know the self-discovery people trying to find themselves seeking the truth seeking who they are so we are experiencing all of these things and that could also go into the you know other contrast onto the other extreme where we are just disconnecting from one another and just just you know hermiting and stuff which you know has been my experience for a big part of my life and stuff but it doesn't mean that it's only this one or the other to choose from it doesn't mean that there is nothing else to choose from so this is where i feel that the spirit is presenting these uh contrasts and opportunities you know for comparison and this is how the whole reality really works you know this reality of polarity of duality this is why contrast exists you know the light and the dark the good and the bad and you know all the rest of it because we can choose and we can come um closer to the middle point to the zero point the point from which is created we can just um, edge closer to the center right like experiencing one and in the other contrast and then we go okay how do i find the uh, homeostasis you know the point of neutrality so this is i feel what in a big degree has been showing up you know in my reality in this past two and a half weeks and even beyond you know even in england you know being um, exposed to the uh, memory lanes and um, also the aspects of myself that uh, i i played you know the roles that i played while i lived in the uk which is also what i shared last year when i went to visit you know the ghosts of the past and walking down the memory lanes and in a sense, this is like this new freshness. This is literally what Spirit is giving me right now, the download I'm getting. Um, it's literally, this is the Aquarius. You know, this is the Aquarian energy where, you know, we are going back and forth, you know, revisiting the past. We're revisiting the old aspects of ourselves, like being triggered and the memories of the past, the unhealed wounding. This is all coming up to the surface. But at the same time, we are introduced these new things. We are rediscovering new aspects of ourselves and uncovering aspects of ourselves, which we didn't even know were there, but they were always there. And uh, having this uh, new energy coming into our life, just in my case now, you know, visiting this farm, I've never, I mean, I had been to US uh, when I worked in a cruise ship and predominantly I had visited um, Alaska multiple times and Hawaii multiple times, but mainland US, I've been to a handful of places and even that was very time limited because it's just a little bit tricky for the crew to be allowed out in uh, America because of situations uh, and that then have consequences consequences for everyone involved but without going into details about that I haven't seen much of the US much of states especially mainland US and I never uh, experienced like days in the US you know it was like you know a few hours here and there that's it like I said I did have more profound uh, experience in Alaska and Hawaii but this is the first time for me being in a mainland US uh, I've never been to Tennessee before 
and being like in on a farm i had never been on a farm in my life so there are all these new energies some of it yeah you know like looking around myself i go oh my god it looks just like bulgaria you know all this beautiful nature you know the nature is you know the nature is nature it's not that dissimilar like yeah you have some special species or trees you know like um, vegetation and stuff but nature is nature you know uh, so it is like oh yeah it looks just like bulgaria and this driveway looks just like england you know or whatever you know so i really feel that i find here in tennessee you know like aspects of aspects of many different countries that i visited like this reminds me of england this reminds me of bulgaria this reminds me of slovakia this reminds me of whatever other place i've been to you know uh, but it's got its own uniqueness of course it's all new unique flavor that makes it what it is special to this place but it's just interesting you know where um like i started saying about this contrast where we are exposed to these new energies you know to these new and uh, to these new interactions and like something different something that like i said there is some similarity like okay this looks similar like something else but in itself it's something new you know it's got its own frequency its own essence and then the initial response which is what i dived into last time is this rejection like oh no 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 i don't want that i want to go back to the familiar i want the convenience i want the comfort zone you know like oh yeah i like it better in this other place because that's the place i know better <laughs> you know or whatever and uh, also, as I started saying before, I went into rabbit trails uh, and rabbit holes. Um, the first week is usually the hardest for me because it's these complete readjustments to new place, new energies, new frequencies. Me having, you know, moon in cancer, I keep talking about this frequently. I am very, very sensitive, even though I have my coping mechanism, so I don't always show it. But I am very perceptive to energies, whether that's people, places, spaces, like I can I can feel the energy. And, you know, this uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know easier sometimes it's more challenging so the first week especially of the undercurrents of the energies uh, that are present in this environment and people that are part of the environment i felt really like unsettled and i felt like oh my god there is all this undercurrent and stuff like that and uh, I, I just felt out of space and i was really struggling to connect you know to spirit and to myself and i really felt that uh strong guidance to be grounded to go in the nature be grounded don't worry about work don't worry about you know channeling don't worry about any of that because that is part of you always but um like what needs to happen now, what this place is offering for me, for you, wherever you are, is this opportunity to find yourself, to settle in yourself, whatever that means to you. And that is different in different places, depending where we are, you know, what environments we surround ourselves with and people we surround ourselves with, because all of these um have an impact on our energy field and as i mentioned different aspects of ourselves are coming out to play so yes yeah, so initial response usually would be the rejection you know this resentment or you know like i don't like that i don't want that because the ego cannot identify it or it projects something of the past onto the present and it says no 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 i don't want that again you know i didn't like that last time that happened and stuff but each situation each person uh, it's it's unique it itself you know you will never find exactly the same person again but you'll find person in your life that will remind you of the other person you know like oh you are just like my friend whatever or you are just like my old boyfriend or something you know but it's never the same person like there are certain traits that are similar it's never the same place even though some trees might look similar some archways might look similar but it's never exactly the same because you are not the same person either like we all change and grow and evolve so going back to the caveat which you know i'm going around it's like this interesting um this interesting happenings <laughs> this interesting experiencing of reality at the moment which literally feels that somebody put a pause on my life you know like being in a suspended reality where it's just like the 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 matrix that you know i guess i manifested i attracted the aspect of is creating a container for me to fill my cup to ground in my being to recalibrate to who am i becoming who do i want to be next and where do i want to go from here and at the same time re-experiencing patterns shadows and triggers of the past that are coming up to the surface being re-triggered by people's spaces circumstances and having the opportunity to look at them from this different place space and uh, lens 
and deal with them differently and I'm trying to understand another layer of the teaching because I know that many of us can beat ourselves up about uh, oh I thought I already learned that lesson and how come this is coming around again and triggering me and you know and then we you know go into self-judgment criticism hate and all that you know that oh you know I failed or you know I'm a loser or whatever you know all these negative self-talk and you know self-hate and of course, you know, that is easy to fall into, but then we're not really learning anything, are we? You know, it's just like we cannot really go any further when we get to that point. So it's interesting and important, I feel, to observe and be present. Again, that word present, you know, be present with all that is, you know, all that is happening, all that we are experiencing. Like this moment, I felt this surge of emotion and I was like, where is this coming from and why do I feel this way? And I just felt very withdrawn and, you know, in my own suffering <laughs> and then there was a person to talk to you know because now i'm surrounded by people we are living like you know not many people but like kind of like a communal living you know people around we eat in the same place and stuff like that so there was a person to speak to and i was so grateful that i had someone to to run my thoughts through or, and with and to be able to then you see it's like when people say that when you like record yourself speaking just what I'm doing now or when you write something and then you can see it or listen back to it it helps us because it's like okay these thoughts that are running rampant in my head now they oh it's starting to rain <laughs> now, now they have a form a form whether it's a sound or whether it's a picture or whether it's a written word and then I can look at that form <laughs> it's literally starting to rain it's crazy uh, and then I can look at that form and then I can go like, okay, uh, you know, what is this form trying to uh, mirror back to me so I can learn from it, right? So, yeah, so it was very helpful for me to be able to um, have a conversation with someone through whom I could run my thoughts and then have it mirrored back to me and also that person, you know, giving me some of their perspective and stuff and just how valuable it is to actually have humans around us even though there is also the necessity and value in having the time and space for ourselves you know and this is where i feel this ebb and flow and in and out you know the yin and yang energy and the inwards outwards you know when we we, we you know human beings in essence is a social creature you know so and we are apparently tribal creatures so it is this like being able to have your own space and time for yourself but at the same time being in uh, connection with other beings then then can help us you know to learn and to understand ourselves better because everybody is our teacher and just being here you know being on this planet and incarnate over and over again is all about learning it's all about uh, integrating healing and integrating another layer of fragment or uh, of fragmentation and disconnection of the human collective consciousness because this is what we all ha came here to do you know we came here to grow and evolve in our own uniqueness in our own expression of the uh, of the soul and also um, heal the ancestor wounding you know that got unresolved and became passed on you know got passed on as a button uh, to the next generation but at the same time we are contributing towards shifting the human collective you know as a whole and this is where more and more going forward it is this uh, essence of the um, group mind you know like the collective mind not like you know not in this uh, programming and conditioning way that the matrix wants us to believe you know that oh yeah you know we are all part of the one like you know communism or something but um, these higher levels of consciousness understanding our place uh, in the all and how that which we do, which we are and what we do impacts everyone you know on an energetical level sometimes on more than just an energetical level depends on the proximity of the people around you but uh yeah in a sense everything is connected you know so anyway just me going through this little rampant of musings which i don't know if it even makes sense or holds any meaning to anyone other than myself um i'm just trying to i guess articulate what i've been processing you know, through this space and place and uh, the people that I'm surrounded by and having the opportunity to to just be, to just be. I even uh, 
lightened my schedule you know i'm not doing that many readings like i'm spreading them out because uh, i don't want to just be working all the time obviously there are certain responsibilities uh with regards to me being on a farm and you know being um this is an energy exchange so being able to contribute towards uh the work that's being done around me so i i am really conscious about allowing and leaving enough time and space uh for myself and for just being really that's that's the interesting thing that i'm not really doing very much i'm just i'm just trying to be and i am not even necessarily trying to figure things out because like i said i'm struggling with some kind of like brain fog or something but it literally is just to allow myself to just be and how hard it is for us you know for most of us how hard it is to just allow ourselves to be you know most of us feel that i shouldn't be i doing something you know like uh you know like that's that's how it is for myself you know i can excuse myself from not doing you know not doing a car you know like i don't know doing like uh, building something or uh, tidying up or cleaning or whatever you know doing doing for the others and stuff or doing just doing something but then even like meditation and stuff you know even then that can like kind of like we can create a chore out of that you know oh i have to meditate every day i have to do it you know whereas we know that there are different ways and forms how we can meditate you know just like walking and just trying to be focused on one thing i know for a lot of people is the breath focusing on a breath and that is a meditation and stuff so it's like being totally exposed to this flexibility this having to have to be flexible and find ways new ways to new ways to just to just experience life <laughs> which is which is something that is uncommon for me because like i said even when i'm in mexico or when i'm in bulgaria i'm still doing stuff even if if that what i'm doing is spiritual but here it's like no you cannot even do spiritual work you literally just have to be <laughs> just have to be present <laughs> and i'm like really struggling with that because i feel like oh my god but i'm not doing anything okay yeah i'm doing some farm work so i'm doing something right that's the doing bit but then i feel like okay now i'm not doing farm work so i should be you know you know meditating or channeling or doing something you know i should i just should be doing something uh, and and then you know that for one reason or another doesn't work out and uh i'm just trying to for myself i'm trying to find a peace with that that okay well you know like i understand and this is kind of the intention that i put out there before coming here because i felt so exhausted you know in every level after this summer and this chaos that my life has become since i left mexico in uh, at the end of april and how everything just got turned upside down and changed at the rapid pace and i just decided before i was leaving england that i just want to be able to rest you know this is what i want from coming to tennessee connect with the nature and rest and yeah that's exactly what's happening you know your wish is my command you know this is exactly what the universe is accommodating with me with by giving me a brain fog so i feel like well i don't really have much to say or what am i going to record about you know like my brain is not working right now i have nothing inspirational motivational to share and stuff so it's like okay that's fine <laughs> you know give yourself a grace um and yeah and this uh, like i said you know i'm on a farm where I am uh, obviously expected to, you know, work, to, to do something, but uh, my friend runs a farm in a very unique way, which is like, oh, we just work in the morning, you know, we don't work in the afternoon, afternoon is yours, afternoon you do whatever you want and stuff. So I was kind of, uh, before coming here, I was kind of worried, like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, when am I going to do my yoga? When am I going to do my meditation? When am I going to do my social media? When am I going to do my readings? When am I going to answer my emails? You know, and all these like to-do lists, you know, da -da 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 -da. You know all these things that uh wherever i am i'm you know i'm having to have to integrate into my schedule and yeah and somehow it's all working out in a way that actually you know i'm doing the bare minimum <laughs> and just learning to be okay with being present <laughs> and yeah and just trying to be at peace with that that oh yeah you know this is the month when you are just meant to learn to be present and just to be you know uh, without having to feel guilty about it or apologizing or making excuses about it so yeah so anyway guys this like this that is the i guess <laughs> the most profound thing i had to say because uh, as you can tell i don't really have um you know many um inspirational thoughts to share 
uh, it's just more of a brainstorm of the current environmental experience and yeah to me it's very um, very connected to astrology because even when I look at the astrology and despite the fact that we are in an eclipse season these eclipses are so interesting because the lunar eclipse we just experienced it literally showing us how everything is ending you know and this is nothing new for us we've been talking about it for some time you know so this is not like a surprise you know uh, the eclipse you know the lunar eclipse in Pisces conjunct Neptune you know square Jupiter and Mars square in the nose pointing to the north node and Pluto being on 29 degrees you know <laughs> and trine in sun and you know then that uh, grand earth trine was in the sky and the kite I believe right it was all happening so yeah this all just represents ending you know there is like in my you know my personal solar return video which I recorded uh, almost two weeks ago now uh, I actually need to record my solar return, solar return, <laughs> lunar eclipse, not lunar, did I say lunar return? You see, my brain is not working. The lunar eclipse video and, you know, I'm just about to be thinking about recording the solar eclipse video. I had nothing much to say when I was making that recording because I was like, well, what is there to say? You know, there is nothing much to say, you know, it's just like the ending cycles, you know, and this is a huge thing, but in a sense, it's a simple thing because... It is what it is, you know, like we go to the point in our evolution as a human collective that, yeah, things are ending, things have to change, there is no other way, you know, we cannot continue in the same trajectory the same way things were before. And this is uh, applicable to every single individual and collective, you know, because the co individuals create collective. And then we have the solar eclipse, which we are building towards, and I haven't properly decept the chart, so I don't have all the ins and outs yet, but obviously it's happening in Libra conjunct in Mercury, you know, uh, it is happening uh, on a south node, um, yeah, it is like in a close degrees, even though the um, Aries eclipse, uh, Aries um, moon will not be an eclipse, uh, despite the fact that it's still happening not so far from the north node, but not within the degree. So anyway, so with the solar eclipse, it is beginnings, you know, it is beginnings. We have a completely different energies to what we experienced a year ago during the solar eclipse in Aries, uh, Aries solar eclipse in Libra, which was October 14th. So there are completely different energies at play because so much had happened since that eclipse in Libra in October 2023. You know, we had this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, obviously all the personal planet, planets conjuncted Pluto in Aquarius for the first time in February. And, uh, you know, everything changed. Uranus conjunct uh, Mars, well, Mars conjunct Uranus, Mars conjunct North Node, like all these things, you know, all these things took place since then. And Venus since conjuncted South Node for the second time. So the energy is very different, you know, from what we experienced last time, last year. And there will be no lunar eclipse in Libra because uh, in spring we'll have the lunar eclipse in Virgo, you know. So... We won't really know what this is going to look like for the next nine years, to nine to 19 years, you know, uh, 19 and a half, because that's the next time we're going to have eclipses in Libra Aries. But, you know, of course, in nine years time, it's going to be uh, North Node in Libra. And uh, then we we'll have to wait for next 19 years until we have the uh, South Node in Libra again, which is where the South Node is at the moment. So that's what I mean. In essence, there is nothing very much to say because we are breaking free from the consensus. We are breaking free from this cookie, cookie, uh, cookie cut astrology, from this copy paste way of experiencing reality. And what this new reality looks like, it's going to be different for different people, depending on what frequency they're tapping into, how much work they've done, how much they released, you know, how much they're willing to face their shadow and not run away from it, but, uh, you know, help it, you know, make, allow it to make them stronger. So that's what I mean. There are all these factors because um, the more that people are awakening and individuating and, you know, going through the dark night of the soul and releasing the past, the past karma, the past conditioning, you know, and all the rest of it the more unpredictable the outcome will become because it will be something new. It will be something different. And this is why also the traditional form of astrology especially the predictive the predictive astrology tarot and all the all this other stuff it will become less and less accurate because at the moment where people are still very predictable because they 
they recreate in the same patterns and in many cases react to the pattern in the same way because if it's subconscious you know and most of it is subconscious uh if it's subconscious then we will just the subconscious will just feel feeling the um response you know it's happening subconsciously you know we subconsciously we attract certain situation create create certain situation which is a recreation of the same pattern the same energy and then our reaction to the situation person whatever is the same because it's all subconscious you know we're not conscious of it but the more we awakening and the more we becoming conscious of situations uh, the more we can alter this subconscious behavior become because we're becoming conscious of it and reprogram it and therefore the the new pathways the new neurological pathways that are being created the new responses to the environment will become unpredictable because they will become Aquarian, they will, will become unique and individuating rather than repeating the patterns of the past, of the ancestors, of the collective, you know, like it's just this predictive, you know, be, predictive behavior that comes out from the subconscious, right? So that's what I mean. This uh, this predictive forms of astrology, uh, tarot, whatever, you know, any of these modalities that people go to to predict their future, right? This will be more and more inaccurate uh, the more and more people are going to break free from this consensus and from this uh, asleep state and become conscious. It will become unpredictable. And this is why we were being put and kept under spell and under sleep mode for such a long time because unpredictable people <laughs> are not desired by the current system and the way it structures, right? So that's what I mean, you know, in essence, my blubbing about my, you know, checked out existence right here for, you know, being in nature and completely disconnected from world and reality in my suspended cocoon again, and just having to have to learn to ground and be present and uh, present with everything, everything that is and everything I'm experiencing and feeling and new and really pay attention to it, you know, new pathways are being created because I'm becoming conscious of the old patterns and I'm like being uh, introduced new stimuli and like now I have to respond differently and obviously the ego tries to project the past and say, I don't like this, I don't want to, you know, I want something different to the, what I know, what I'm familiar with. So this is the challenge, you know, this is how slowly, slowly the universe is changing us and changing our pattern and changing our way of being and it's gonna take time you know because the density is the uh, the pentacles are the slowest moving suit the density takes time to change the density takes time to move right so this is what's happening and this is how it's been showing up for me but i'm pretty sure this is how it's been showing up for many people that are being reintroduced the same patterns but at the same time there is this new energy whatever that is whatever that is in your life but there is some kind of new energy that's in your life that is making you to look at everything that is old and you know and it's familiar in a different way and there's the challenge because the ego will want to keep the familiar the comfort zone because it doesn't want things to change because it threatens its existence so this is where we need to retrain the ego and uh, make it feel comfortable with the unknown which is only if we trust the higher self and then see manifestation of that inner guidance of that intuition and then we have the proof Sorry, there is some commotion happening over here. Uh, then we have the proof that actually trusting my intuition worked out. You know, so this is the thing. Like when we go into the unknown, we have no proof and we are scared because we don't know how this is going to work out. But like, you know, I've been sharing for myself, you know, answering the call, going to Mexico, answering the call, going to Bulgaria. Last year was my very first time, you know, in Bansko. And now I went back second time and I was like, oh, this is all familiar now. You know, I created new neuro pathways. Now going to Tennessee, you know, completely like scared. Like, what, how am I going to survive? You know, having people around me 24 seven, cohabiting with different people, eating with different people. How am I going to like that? What if I don't like that? You know, am I going to have time to do the things I enjoy? and blah 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 you know all the rest of it but now you know being here for two weeks i'm kind of settled in in, in this energy you know and i'm uh, you know like it's despite the fact that the first week i was like no way i'm coming back this is not for me you know this taurus likes comfort zone right and now i'm thinking like oh i actually like this you know you know what I, I wouldn't mind to come back you know and stuff like that so that's what i mean there is a new something introduced to your life and the first response like i was talking about last time is i don't like it 
this is unknown. It's not comfortable. It's not like anything I know. And then we project of, you know, some experience that we didn't enjoy onto it, which is not the same, but, you know, the same emotion. I don't like it. So, yeah, but then we settle into this new frequency and then we can more objectively decide, do I actually really like it or dislike it? Because it's actually a very different experience. It's a new experience, you know, it's not exactly the same as something before. And that takes time and it takes that presence and that groundiness, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm actually really having this experience right here, right now. I'm present with this. I'm not trying to project past onto it or worry about the future, but I'm actually really present with this. So this is what I feel, you know, this is how these patterns are going to change again, you know, reintroduce the old patterns because of the Pisces energy that we had uh, flooding to us and through us since the lunar eclipse in Pisces in conjunction with Neptune that's indicating the closing of the old way of being, you know, this moon behind the Neptune, the familiar identities and um, roles that we play that is ending. But at the same time, this new moon, you know, new moon solar eclipse in Libra, which will not have the lunar eclipse counterpart for another decade, right? <laughs> and like I said, that will be on a different node. But this eclipse, you know, this one that is coming up on October 2nd is in a new phase conjunction with the north node, uh, south node, sorry, south node and opposing the north node. And this is, uh, this is new because last year it was in a closing phase conjunction with the south node. Now it's in a new phase conjunction with the south node. So we are creating a new neurological pathways with regards to how we are connecting to the world around us and the reality that we are experiencing and through which we are co-creating the next moment because every next moment is created from present moment because all we ever have is the present moment. The present is the um, effect of the past and it's also the cause of the future, right? Yes, the present is the effect of the past and a cause of the future. That's great. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> I just got that. So anyway, so isn't that fascinating? So that's what I mean. So even though... There is no really any um, point to my madness of what I've been sharing here. Uh, it really is the energy that I'm in. You know, this, like just being surrounded by the container, which is beautiful, and just being able to be present and digest, you know, because even though we are in, you know, we are in Libra season now, but Mercury as the ruler is still in Virgo at the time, and I'm recording this today, opposing this Neptune. And yeah, it's the balancing, you know, it's the opportunity to clean up and detoxify <laughs> these old things by making adjustments. But the adjustments have to be made in this everyday random reality. You know, how much you sleep? What do you eat? Are you drinking enough? Are you resting enough? Are you grounding enough? Do you have enough interaction with other people around you? Do you feel heard? You know, like all these like little nuances, these little miniature aspects of our reality, which we take for granted. But if they get into extreme, you know, just like me being in Mexico for six months, in isolation I'm like well after six months it's not such a fun you know and uh, yeah and you know is this and that's why I you know this is my personal makeup but I don't know like how healthy it is to live in one place you know surrounded by the same people for your entire life this is definitely not something that I aspire to or feel attracted to because I have Gemini on my IC and I have to keep moving because this is something that's very important to me and it helps me to grow and that's to do also with my North Node in a third house and Mercury in Aries so anyway, guys, I think I've been blubbing uh, long enough and um, I don't know if anybody's still listening at this point, but let me just give you, uh, let me just see if I can turn my camera around so you can see a little bit of my environment. So there we go, guys. So this is what I'm surrounded with. This is my little office in the nature. You can see the rain and yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. I mean, it is a great day today, but you can see the the fall is already coming and here is the th 360 degree there we go so yeah so this is just a tiny 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 feel of my current environment and yeah and the gratitude that i cannot even express for the opportunity to be here despite you know certain aspect of it that my <laughs> taurus <laughs> is like me where is my comfort zone, you know? Why am I getting bitten by mosquito to death? <laughs> and what about my skin all damaged by bites, you know? And all this, you know, like I'm just observing myself and just um, holding compassion and laughing, you know, like, okay, Taurus, just get over yourself. Um, 
so yeah so this is this is this is my life at the moment um just like everything it's not gonna last forever as i mentioned at the beginning i'm halfway through so there are only another two and a half weeks and then i'll be getting ready to <laughs> to be <laughs> plugged back into the matrix especially nobody does it better and faster than my family <laughs> and that's where i'll be heading from here back to slovakia to take care of my uh, citizenship application <laughs> to get my roots back under control so anyway guys i'm gonna leave it at that uh, i hope that perhaps some of what i share might have resonated or you know been helpful to someone if you are experiencing brain fog or thinking you are losing your mind and uh, why is all this stuff from the past coming around again uh, and yeah, just uh, just give yourself some grace and compassion and understand that, you know, you're just healing in another layer of something that is not even yours. You know, all these things have been passed on and there is nothing new under the sun. All these patterns are just recreated and uh, we put our unique spin to them and we just try to tackle them from this new time and space reality that we are experiencing and co-creating as we go. And yeah, and this is all now leading us towards this um, new moon solar eclipse in Libra in a new, new phase conjunction with South Node whilst Venus is in Scorpio, which is making us to dig deep to create these new patterns and new ways of relating to ourselves, people around us and the reality we are experiencing. Because we know that the old is ending, but there is this lapse of time in between where we we are making adjustments and that's going to be especially the theme of the eclipses in virgo pisces throughout 2025 and some of it 2026 is this opportunity for adjustments because then 2026 is a huge year and especially from the second half of it onwards so i'm gonna go i wish you all a wonderful rest of the day or wherever wherever you are whatever you're doing I hope you're doing well. I'm sending you a lot of nature vibes and I'll speak to you again soon. Much love everyone and bye for now.